Welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to share some real life examples about how to set boundaries politely. So much of my videos are about the, you know, deep inner workings of boundaries and all these different topics. And a lot of times like, well, okay, that's great, but how do I use them in real life? So that's what today is going to be all about is real life examples that you can use so you know how to put them in place in these situations. Now, before we get to that, I have to just real quick glance at boundaries. To be able to set our boundaries, we have to know our morals and values, needs and wants, negotiables and non-negotiables. Yes, I beat that dead horse because everyone wants to skip that step. But because we're all out of touch with the reality, because we had to take on our parents' morals and values, needs and wants, negotiables and non-negotiables, and because Studies show 95% of our adult life, we are not present in our life. We are stuck back in our childhood. People don't know those. This is critical to live in moderation, to recover from codependence, to be able to enact boundaries. We have to know our morals and values, needs and wants, negotiables and non-negotiables. I've done videos on that. Please watch them. That is central. We need this because it's what allows us to know what do I set a boundary on? All right. The other thing to remember about boundaries is they're not about controlling another person, but protecting ourselves. A lot of people use boundaries to control. That's not a boundary. That's actually abusive. That's codependent. It's, um, it's called a wall. It is not kind and loving. Boundaries are to protect us and to create relationship with another person. All right, one other caveat. Boundaries don't work with an abuser. They don't work with narcissists. They don't work with anyone like that because the, the premise behind boundaries is what I just said. It's about creating relationship, healthy, moderate, mature relationship. Well, if somebody's an abuser, they just crash boundaries. So there's only run, one resolution. If there's an abuser in your life, there's one boundary, no contact. There's just completely disengage. That's how you set a boundary with them. Now, let me get into some examples. The first one is a physical boundary. You ever go to cocktail parties, network meetings, whatever, and you get those people that are the huggers and kissers and you don't want, this, there's somebody, maybe you're upset with them or don't like them or don't know them and you don't want to do it. Like I can't stand the whole kissy face thing like this, you know, kiss each other on the cheek. It's supposed to be this status thing of, oh, only the very successful people do it. I find it very pretentious. And it's not real, it, it's just this act, I won't do it. And so when I'm in situations where that seems to be the norm, this is the boundary I set. Is people come to me, I just put a, I, I mean, I stiff arm them. Heisman Trophy, no. I offer my hand, I will, that's polite. That's a, you know, this is a, a common greeting, very respectful, I will shake your hand but I'm not gonna play kissy, fake kissy face with you. And so it's just an arrow. And if they, you know, they, you'll see them, they're like trying to get around it. I just don't move. I'm just like, hi, nice to meet you. And I'm just warm, engaging smile. Hi, nice to meet you, how are you? And I'm just moving it like, no, I'm, you, ain't getting close, you ain't getting in my boundary. This is staying here, all right? So that's how you do that. Did you notice there wasn't any anger in it? I was pleasant. I am happy to meet them, but I've set the boundary. I will not allow that fault, what to me is fault. Now, if it's someone I genuinely cared about, and it was like, no, we're actually there kissing each other on the face of, no, this is warm and endearing. Well, that's, I would let that in. But a stranger, because it looks good, and no, that's not kind. And I, I, for me, that's just my reality. You may have your reality. I want you to keep it. But for me, it doesn't work. So I set the boundary. All right, now let's get to a really tough one. Parents, how do you set the boundaries with parents? Well, the first thing to recognize is we are the problem, not our parents. And so I'm gonna share an example. I've used this one before, it was my mother. And she used to call me nonstop, pester me, leave me 10, 12, 15 messages, all very passive aggressive. Kenny, I need to talk to you. Wouldn't tell me what it was, but there's always an air of, you know, something's bad or wrong. You're very manipulative and there never was. She just wanted to ask me, I don't know, do you like this or do you like that? Well, it's, look, if somebody wants to call 12 or 15 times, it's their life, they get to. 
but I didn't have the recovery. Did you hear all the things I made up about my mother? I chose a definition that it was abusive. I don't know if it is or not. I just know it doesn't work for me. I don't have the recovery to handle somebody who pounds me like that. All right. So I don't know, several days, I let, I didn't respond right away. It took a couple days and I finally called her back and I said, mom, I love you. And I love that you're so excited to talk to me, that you leave me many messages. I said, but I want to share something about myself. I've realized something that when people call me a lot, that for some reason I get in my head and I make up that I'm being suffocated and I make up that um, they don't care about me, that they just want they, what they want. Now, I don't know if any of that's true. That's what I do to myself. And because I've made all of that up, I, don't, I recognize I don't have the recovery to handle situations like that. It's something I'm working on. So I want you to know you're allowed to call me as many times as you want. This is my problem and something I'm working on. But until I get a better handle on it, for now, the best that I'm able to do is if that happens, I have to wait until I calm down enough and I let go of all of those thoughts and feelings and I can genuinely be present and be me in a conversation. So, um, you know, if you if it works for you to leave me lots of messages, please do. It just may take me a while before I get back to you until I get enough, get centered enough that I can do it. Now, on the other hand, if you'd like to talk to me right away, I have found that the best way is for someone to just leave me one message. And I, for some reason, I don't seem to feel, I don't make up all those same feelings. Um, and so it's up to you, do whatever you want, um, but those are your options. And so I just wanted to let you know, that's what's going on with me. And again, I love that you're so excited to talk to me all the time. So thanks for listening. You see, I didn't tell her, I didn't change her and say, you need to do this, you need it. That's control. Now I'm being boundaryless. I'm saying how they should live their life. That's codependence. I know that's how everyone talks to each other. And you're hearing me talk about this and you go, wow, this is weird. Yeah, this is what is called adulthood, moderation, and, and having self-esteem and boundaries, that, you know, cut recovery from codependence. This is what it looks like. It's a whole new way of living in the world. Well, I'll tell you, your life gets a lot better when you live this way. Um, but see, I didn't blame her. I took complete ownership of it and I offered her alternatives. And I also let her know what works for me. It was absolutely adorable. A couple days later, I don't know, maybe a week, she called me and still totally passive aggressive. She's like, hi, Kenny, it's your mom. And um, I'm, I want to talk to you and, and I'm only going to leave one message. <laughs> And I just lost it. Still, she's playing her game, but again, it's the best she could do. But wasn't that sweet of her to adjust for my dysfunction? It's very kind of her. And yes, it was perfectly imperfect in how she did it. And that's what I found. Now, you may have a parent who explodes at all of this. Well, recognize that's their unhealed pain. It's not about you. Okay. Now, what do we do with uh, people who are passive aggressive? This is another parent child story. This comes from a client of mine. Um, her mother does this all the time. And so she was in the office recently talking about how um, her mother just, her mother is way too involved in her life. She's a 27 year old woman and mom calls her nonstop and stalks her social media and so what she's saying is, is if her mother wants to make a, a nasty comment, she doesn't say it directly. She has this manipulative way of doing it. She's passive aggressive. And so they're having a conversation about this trip her daughter went on and all the different pictures. And then it comes to this one. And her mom goes, um, well, yeah, what about that one picture? And her daughter's like, what one picture? And she's, you know, you know, that picture. She wouldn't say it's the one in the bathing suit. See, mom sets her daughter up to then clobber her. And so here's how you handle a passive aggressive parent or friend who does things like that, who sets you up to clobber you. 
what I advised her to do was the next time her mother did that is go, huh, mom, it sounds like you're struggling remembering what picture it is. I'm sure you'll remember it. And when you do, you're more than welcome to share what it is you'd like to say. In other words, you put the problem at their feet. It's their problem. She's the one who can't remember that picture. You may know what it is, but don't bite. And that's how you set the boundary. You no longer fix the problem for them and walk into it. You lay the problem at their feet by, huh, sounds like you can't quite recall what that is. Well, I'm sure you will. And when you do, let me know. Boom. Boundary. Very polite, very kind, but it leaves the problem where it belongs. In them, not in us. All right? What about when someone tries to tell you what to think? Well, this happened recently with my counselor, my mentor, my friend, Mike. We talk every week. And I can't remember exactly what the topic was, but we started to move into spirituality around the topic. And he said something to the effect of, now I know you don't like talking about all the spiritual stuff. Well, right in that moment, Mike lost containment. He lost boundaries. He tried to tell me what my reality is and who, what I think and feel about spirituality. And so as soon as he did, I said, you know, Mike, I love you. And if you ever want to know what I think and feel about spirituality, you're more than welcome to ask me. And he went right back at me and said, you know, Kenny, I'm allowed to have my feelings about what you think about spirituality. It was wonderful. We both were setting the boundary. Mike wanted, basically what Mike was saying is, I'm not ready to give up my reality. I don't want intimacy on this topic. Well, okay. He doesn't have to know what my real thoughts are. And he wants to keep that. Well, great. But see, there's enough maturity there that we were able to flow in a conversation, keeping boundaries. Whereas what would happen to most people, don't tell me what I think about spirituality. Like they get defensive. You know, and they, and they make up and they, they start accusing each other. Instead, we both stayed boundaried. We both kept our reality and politely let the other one know, hey, if you want to know, I'll tell you. And in this case, he said, no, I don't want to know. I want to keep my, okay, great. I didn't push him anymore. That's a loving, mature conversation. All right. So uh, what do we do if people go against our morals and values? Well, this is a story that goes back to when I was dating my second wife. She was working at a bar, kind of a restaurant bar. And I used to stop by kind of late afternoon. I'd always have a gap in my schedule and I'd just hang out. And because she wasn't very busy and a lot of times she'd sit with me. Well, I started noticing that people would come in and, and because it was kind of a sports bar and she was attractive, men would buy her shots and she'd do shots with them and flirt with them. And it started driving me crazy. And I went, wait a minute, what can I control? I can control me. Is it okay that she does this? Well, it seems to be okay with her. She gets to live her life any way she wants. I don't have any control over it. So wait a minute. I'm the one who has a problem watching the woman I'm dating flirt and do shots with another man and with other men. What can I control? Well, I can choose not to show up anymore. So I stopped. I stopped putting myself in front of the abuse. Well, what I found to be abusive, other men may think it's great. She obviously thought it was okay. Didn't bug her. Worked in her life. It's none of my business. And so I stopped coming. And after three or four days, she's like, you come by, you know, repeatedly and me saying no. She finally said, well, I know what's going on. You don't, I noticed she stopped coming by. Now listen to how I set the boundary and how I took ownership. I said, well, yeah, I've realized something. I've noticed that I have a big problem in me. I'm not a big fan of my girlfriend doing shots and flirting with other men. And so instead of standing in front of it and watching it, I've just decided to spend my time elsewhere. And here's what happens. And see, I know what we've been taught. You're supposed to confront them, tell them not to do that. Well, that's baloney. Now, they may do it. They may stop. But then they'll do it behind your back. It, remember, boundaries are not about control. Boundaries are about connection. And we were early in the relationship. It wasn't time to set demands. And demands don't work anyway. 
And so here's what happened. And this is what's so beautiful about setting healthy boundaries that aren't controlling. She thought about it. And she realized, wait a minute, my drinking and my flirting, I lose time with Kenny. So it was only a couple days later, she, we were out to dinner and she said, you know, I've been thinking about something. She goes, I'm not okay that I don't see you anymore because of where I was working. So she, she said, I want you to know I quit that job um, and I'm working somewhere else where I'm not in that environment. So that'll no, no longer be a problem. Also, I want you to know um, I'm not going to drink. I'm only going to have three drinks at a time now. Boom. Two things that were in my non-negotiables that had they continued, I would have broken up. I gave her the opportunity to look at her own life and decide what her morals and values were, what her needs and wants were, her negotiables and non-negotiables were. She decided flirting and drinking cost her relationship with Kenny. She'd rather have the relationship. Now, someone else may choose the flirting and drinking. Well, if that's non-negotiable, then great. There's no loss. See, I don't lose. If she'd have kept the other one, then I wouldn't have invested much and it would have ended right there. That's a healthy boundary. Do you hear? We take ownership. It's our, it's what we want. It's not that they need to change. I'm not controlling anyone as I talk about these. All right. <laughs> what about kids and money? I have a great story here. This is another example. One of the, well, I don't know. I was going to say one of the few moments I was a good parent. I probably had more than I give myself credit for, but this was one I was real proud of. We all know what it's like to go to the grocery store and our kids. Can I have this? Can I have this? Can I have this? Can I have this? Right? And what do we do? No, 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 no. It's a big fight. Oh my God, you guys are driving me crazy. I'll never take you to the store again. You'll never get anything. And we disparage them, shame them, belittle them, spank them. It's just a nightmare. Well, that's not parenting. And so my youngest daughter, we were shopping and turned down the candy aisle. And of course, she grabs a big old bag of candy. Dad, 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 can I have this? Please, 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 please. I was like, well, of course you can have it. I'd love for you to have it. She's like, really? I'm like, yeah. She's like, you mean you're going to buy this for me? I said, oh, no. No, I, I'm not going to pay for it. But you asked if you can have the candy. Of course, I want you to have the candy. But I'm fascinated. How are you going to pay for it? All ticked off. Stomps away. And... I don't know, we get to the end of the aisle around the corner and she's like, well, what if I have a lemonade stand? What if I use that money to pay for it? I'm like, oh my God, you're brilliant. Great idea. How are you going to pay for the lemonade? Ugh. Stomps off again. She's like, well, what if I do chores? Great idea. How much are you going to charge me? Ugh. She And then she started to give me prices way low, like a quarter for this, a quarter for that. And I was like, okay, well... Do you realize you're only charging a quarter? Do you know how much the candy cost? No. Well, let's go back and look. It was like four bucks. Now, how much does it cost for the lemonade? We went over. We priced cups. We priced the mix. We cre a, a container, ice. You know, it was, I don't know. It was like 17, 18 bucks for everything. I said, so now look at what you're charging. Do you see how long it'll take you to get that bag of candy? It's going to take you a long time. So what do you think is more appropriate? So we negotiated prices. So do you see what I did? Instead of yelling and screaming and shaming my child, I just taught my daughter how to build a business. That's setting boundaries. We have to be willing as a parent to invest in our kids enough to stop the yelling and screaming and teach them. Teach them that they can have what they want, but our job is to teach them how to get what they want and what it requires and that was one of those moments where I set boundaries around, yes, you can have candy, but the boundary is you have to pay for it. Well, how are you going to do that? And then I taught her how to pay for it. That's setting a boundary with your children. That's a teaching moment. Instead of standing there, well, no, and we, we stand and we yell at them. That's not parenting. Parenting is teaching. And that's how we set a boundary with them. All right, the next couple are about anger because this is what people run into the most. The first one I'm going to talk about is anger with a stranger. And this happened to me during COVID. I refuse to wear a mask. Um, I've done the research. I know the science. We get sick and hurt because of our emotional condition. This whole, your reality, for a lot of people, get your boundaries in place here. 
because I'm going to share my reality. And this will probably, for those who disagree with me, you're, if, if you, if you allow this in, if you get really upset, you, this is proof you need help with codependence because your internal boundary is given way and you're allowing my reality, my belief system in. So I'm going to, here's what I'm going to suggest. Put a container over you and allow everything to bounce off. If it's not true to you, if it's not your reality, just let it bounce off. Don't let it in. Don't, if you start getting angry and frustrated and want to argue with me, that proves you let it in. Just listen to him and go, wow, that's interesting. Wow, he sees the world differently. That's a mature, healthy boundary. Let it bounce off. So it's my reality and all the research and my expertise in this field is illness is caused um, by emotions, even the CDC, their, their, all, their whole protocol, they went against all of their studies. Um, it, 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 coronavirus was the flu, less than the flu. They elevated all the numbers, classified everything as a death, no matter what it was. People had spent years in and out of the hospital and they get the flu, they get Corona and they die. And so they, they say it's Corona. No, you've been dying your whole life. And this tipped you over. Yes, it played a part, but to ignore the comorbidities that were in place, we've never done science that way. We've gone against every science principle and medical principle and how we've handled COVID. So my personal reality was I'm not wearing a mask. I will not give into this. I won't let people control me. I will keep a boundary. Well, I was in the Denver airport. Everyone's wearing a mask. Now I'm respectful. I didn't go near anybody. And so as I'm waiting for my plane, I leaned back against, um, they have these center kiosks and staying away from everybody, letting them have their space. And this man from 20 feet just comes, I mean, running at me and gets it about two feet away from me. And he's screaming, what are you doing? Are you trying to kill me? Do you think you're better than everybody? Like he was, I mean, he was ballistic. His face was red and he's screaming the whole airport turned and stopped. Like, I'm not like, I'm kind of doing it loud. I mean, he's screaming at me and I just stood there. And my response to him was, I'm really happy that you're doing what works best for you. I didn't argue the science. I didn't argue it. His reality is obviously different. He doesn't give a hoot what I think. It's obvious. He has an agenda. Well, he gets to have his agenda. But I don't have to let him in. So all of that energy, I never let in. I just saw it and went, oh, this poor man. He doesn't even realize that he's causing his own illness and disease. He was 20 feet away from me. And because he is so codependent and lacks so much in internal boundaries, he doesn't even realize if he believes it's true that I'm going to kill somebody because I don't have to wear a mask, he just ran 20 feet and put himself two feet away from me inside the six foot bubble and is now making himself susceptible to me killing him. He's doing it to himself and he's so out of touch with reality, he doesn't even know that he's causing his own disease. That if I did have COVID and somehow he got sick, that he did it to himself. He's completely out of touch with the world. That's heartbreaking. Why would I yell at him? He's a two-year-old in that moment who has no ability to contain his reality in his life, his boundaries, anything. I wasn't angry at all. And I was sincere. I'm really happy that you're doing what works best for you. And then he ran over to the ticket counter, screamed at them, tried to get to control them to fix me. And then a guy in a cart, like he was stopping everybody. Finally, he ran out of steam and walked away. And I just kept repeating, I'm really happy you're doing what works best for you. That's it. We don't have to engage. He's an abuser. That was abusive what he did. I don't have to buy into it. And so I just stayed behind. I kept myself protected and let him be abusive. I do that with people. There are a lot of people who are abusive on my posts. I let them be abusive. They're just doing the best they can. You know, sometimes I get abusive. We're imperfect. That's all. So he's doing the best he can. All right, that's how you handle a stranger who's angry. Now, what about a partner? When your partner screams and yells at you, first ask for space. You know what, there's a lot of energy here and where I am in my recovery, I don't do well with this level of intensity, so I need to back up. And then if they continue, then it's a simple, hey, this isn't working for me. I don't have the containment. This sounds like a lot of 
I'm feeling a lot of emotional energy and I'm hearing words that to me, uh, they're getting inside me. I'm starting to make them personal and feel attacked by it. So I need a break from this. This doesn't work for me. I'm going to leave right now until I can get containment. But I'd also, I'd love to have this conversation, but because of where I am in my process, if there's yelling and screaming and name calling, I can't have the discussion. So it's up to you, but I have to leave now. Boom. We don't stand in front of abuse ever. The only time we get abused is if we allow it. I could have run away from that guy in the airport if I wanted to. Luckily, I have enough boundaries that I, when people do that to me, I'm just like, <sighs> I know, I'm like, I just see a four-year-old child who's hurting. I, it, I don't even, it doesn't get me. Now, it's more difficult in a relationship, and that's why, you know, I've been with abusive partners, and I don't tolerate it. Man, I'm on the cops like that. If I see a woman get anywhere close, I don't mess around. I'm like cops. Like, I am hard line. You don't go there with me. No, I learned my lesson. I stood in front of and took abuse because nobody taught me this. You don't get anywhere near that with me anymore. And that's what we need. That's what we need to teach, but we're, we're, we're not taught correctly. And that's why people like myself get abused. I'm responsible for that. I'm responsible for healing it. Well, I've done the healing work. And so any woman who gets, I've had women just call me a dork. You're such a dork. And I tell casual people, and I set the bound, like, because my ex would call me that, who was abusive. And I go, look, you're, you're not aware of this. But that term doesn't work for me. You can call, you, I, I know you were being playful, but please don't call me that in the future. I don't bring up my ex, but I set the boundary. Don't call me that. I will not allow myself to be disparaged that way. That's a term that doesn't work for me. And that's my job. Okay? So there are some real life examples on how to set boundaries. I hope when I talked about things that disagree with your reality, you are able to keep containment. Use that boundary. Let it bounce off and go, oh, Kenny's just crazy. He's so stupid. What does he know? Love yourself. Keep your reality. If, if your views are the exact opposite of mine, hold on to them. Respect them. Keep them. Don't let my reality infect you. Just recognize, oh, Kenny's hurt. He doesn't know the truth on this. I'm okay with that. All right? So if you like this, please like it. If you think this will help somebody, please share it. If you want to go deeper and learn how to really set and negotiate healthy boundaries, I've done a whole masterclass on this. It's available you know, in the full video and workbook form or Audible. Please go to www.thegreatnessuniversity.com. Look under Masterclasses. It'll take you right to it, and you can sign up today for that. Um, if you think this will help somebody, please share it with them. And as always, enjoy the journey.